Hi everybody. I think tonight I wanted to do, um, I made this, I shot a video of it and posted it recently of a, um, loaded envelope that I made and a lot, a couple of people, not a lot, <laughs> let me rephrase, a couple of people showed interest that they liked the size of this one. So, um, full disclosure, I used, uh, Tamika from Scrap the World. She has a great tutorial. I just typed into the, the uh, YouTube search, um, loaded envelope tutorial and hers was one of the first videos that comes up I want to say it was like the third video that came up and I clicked on hers but the reason why I want to do a tutorial is um she made hers a nine by seven I believe this is a five by seven so I wanted to just show the um I will put it together but I just wanted to show the conversion of just so you know what sizes you'll need so I wanted to show this. This is my thought process when I'm converting sizes. Because I really liked her tutorial, but I just had to adjust for size. So this is my little plan that I drew out. Normally I draw them out freehand. I just really draw just sloppy, wiggly lines. But because I knew I wanted to do a tutorial, I tried to draw this one with a ruler. Just, just for a little bit of a better... Um, idea. So basically what I do is I knew where my score lines needed to be. I knew where all my scores needed to be. I know I want this to be five by seven. That's what those, I want my main pocket to be a five by seven, that size. So then I could just add everything together and that's where I got my numbers. So I knew this was five. I needed three half inch scores here, three half inch scores there. So I know that's an inch and a half, that's an inch and a half, which makes three. Five and three is eight. So I knew that was eight. And I want seven, and I knew I needed another inch and a half's worth of scores, three half inch scores. So I knew seven and another inch and a half is eight and a half. Circled it just so I know that's the pa that's the size I want my paper. So I did that for each pouch. Large pocket, medium pocket, small pocket, back piece. So that's just my thought process. I do keep it in a manila folder. I'm going to start drawing them nicer. And keeping them so when I want to use them in the future, I don't have to figure it all out again. <clears throat> so, I cheated <laughs> and pre-cut. I want to do a little prep work. I did it this morning before work. I decided, you know, this is a good time to prep it. Now, you can also see that I did my scoring also, but I knew it wouldn't show up. So, I did use pen just to show what we're doing here. So... I will create this one, but obviously it won't get used on a project. Project This was just strictly for tutorial. So basically you're going to need an 8 by 8.5 inch piece. Um, on the 8 inch side, you need 3 half inch scores on each side, right and left. And then you only need 3 half inch scores on the bottom. So top's going to be open. That'll be the bottom. So that's the first piece you'll need. Second piece you're going to need is an 8 by 4 and a half, 8 inches wide by 4 and a half on the 8 inch. I call it, here I'll show you on my scoreboard. I know this is my little scoreboard. I The big one's out in the kitchen. But um, when I say load it, you want to load your scoreboard on the 8 inch side. Just know that you want to make sure it's at 8 inches because the first one I made on the main pocket, I kind of messed up and I wasn't paying attention because it almost looks square because it's only a half inch bigger. I kind of messed up and did my scores wrong, so I did have to recut that, but this time I got it. So when I say load it, I mean put that across your top. So load on the 8 inch side, do your half inch, 3, half inch, 3. The bottom side, you only need one half inch score. Uh, small pocket which will be that third small pocket, is at 8 inch by 2 and a half inch. Real simple. Load on the 8 inch side. Half inch, half inch, half inch. Half inch, half inch, half inch. On each side, right and left. And then half inch just on the bottom. Last piece you're going to need, real simple, it's just a 5 by 7 piece. It's the back piece that the main pocket is going to adhere to. That's what we're going to stick it to. Now, I used two eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, and this is the only scrap I had left. That was the only 
waste, which really isn't waste. I would probably chuck these just because it is white paper. These I would keep for uh, punching my one inch circles and things that I use. But that's it. That's all the waste there was. So out of the first piece, I got my eight by eight and a half and my eight by two and a half. Second piece was my eight by four and a half and my five by seven. That was my two eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. And I already showed you the waste wasn't much. That's how I cut it. So that's kind of that. So now we do have to do a little bit of uh, mitering of the corners. I'm going to talk about how my brain works. I like to just cut out first. This is just step one. I like to cut out first thing. Just get rid of those, those little squares. You don't need those squares. They're coming out. So we're going to cut those out. We still got some mitering to do on this. So we're going to cut those out. Now, with my 8 inch piece across the top with my 6 score lines running vertical, I just found that I needed to do this when I was constructing, so now I'm just going to do it off the bat. I'm going to cut up like an eighth of an inch up that first score line. I needed that little extra when I was putting it together. you got to get a lot of this extra material out of the way. And then, I mean, I'm going to take off a pretty good corner here. Because you really need to get this material out of the way. And I would prefer to take it off the side than the bottom. Because I don't want as much coming off the bottom. Which actually, yeah, I got to cut. Sorry. I just got to cut off a little bit more for that eighth of an inch that I cut up. There we go. So see how it's got like that little, that little edge there. I am going to do the same on this one. I'd rather take a little bit more off on the side than on the bottom so you don't have a big hole in the bottom. But you do need to actually take off quite a bit. I cut this a little straighter. I just want to get right. So there we go. I mean, it's not perfectly straight, but you don't really need to worry about it. So now that was the main pocket. So I'm going to kind of do the same on the small and medium pocket. I just want to cut out those little squares. So on these there's only three because we only did one half inch score. But I'm going to kind of do the same. Just a little nick out of it. Just to give myself that little extra room. I just like to get rid of the squares. I can just see it better. Um, when Tamika did her, she just kind of went for it and just cut all her miter like at one shot. Um, you can definitely do that. Let me just cut up there a little bit. Uh, you can definitely cut up in one shot. I just, um, for my brain, it works better for me. So, yep, I'm just going to cut to the score line. There we go. So you can kind of see this a little bit. You just got to get that stuff out of the way, because once we start folding this, you'll, you'll kind of see what I mean. And we're going to do the same on the medium pocket. I'm just going to, for my brain, I like to just get those out of the way first. And then we'll just miter these off. Miter this one off. <clears throat> get that little scoreboard out of my way. Just going to go up a little bit. Just try to make sure I'm on I'm on screen here. And I'm gonna do the same on this side. I'm just gonna come up a hair. Just because I found I did have to get rid of that while I was in the process of gluing. So okay, so no mitering on that. That's just the back piece. So now we gotta do our folds. We'll start with the main pocket, because what the heck, why not? Um what you want to do, we're going to fan fold all these um, half inch scores. So how Tamika said it, which was a good idea, was just have it turned so that whatever you're folding is at the top and always pull towards you first. That's always where you want to start. Um, let me just grab my score tool here. I don't know how this table is going to work. This is a folding table. So we will see. It's like a card table. Um, I just say just make sure you're folding into your main pocket 
that's just how my brain works. Uh, I have a feeling this pen is going to be bleeding. It's going to be smudging, but like we said, that's not a normal part of this. And I just want to burnish it good. Same thing here. Just push it down real quick. Push it down. And the last one will be toward me. And we're going to do that for all our scores. Let's try to do it quickly. I just always make sure I'm pushing it into the pocket first. Everybody's brains work differently, but that's just how my brain interprets. Now, because that's going to be the, this is going to be the outer side, that's going to be the inside. Now, I would say at this point, once you get them all folded, we're going to do the same thing. We're always going to start by pushing in. Um, at this point, before you assemble, I would probably do my matting now. That's when I would do it. Um, I would just use my ruler, measure what that inside dimension is, because you just have to mat within the score lines. You don't have to mat any of the score lines, or any of those little pieces, those half inch. You just got to mat the inside. Um, so I would just measure it and then subtract however, whether you like a sixteenth of an inch, subtract an eighth of an inch from your measurement, if you like a sixteenth of an inch quarter, if you like uh, an eighth of an inch gap all around, just measure a uh, quarter of an inch less of whatever your measurement is. And we got one more to fold, same deal, little pocket. Always fold toward the pocket first, what's going to be the main part of the pocket. Uh, yeah, these half inch ones just fold in. That single one is what I mean, the bottom one. And same deal here. And like I said, mat now or forever hold your peace. Mat on the outside, not on the inside. This is this is gonna be your outside what's facing. So you can even mat it before you fold them. And this one you don't have to do anything with. The only thing I would say is mat both sides, probably. First of all, it'll thicken things up. I mean, this is pretty good cardstock, but I would still mat both sides. As much as I don't like matting these days, it does thicken up your paper, especially if you don't have very thick paper to begin with. So now we're going to start putting together. Now, you could start at the bottom, but to line this up because it's the three, this is so narrow, I'm afraid that I'm not going to hit center. So what I did was I started on one of the sides because you can line it up. You don't have a mitered top. So if your measuring is halfway decent, you should be able to line up the top and then down, make sure the side is nice and even and everything should line up. Like I said, if, <laughs> unlike me, you can uh, use your trimmer halfway decently. So definitely, you know, make sure your trimmer, make sure you're square as, po as possible. I mean, it is a handmade item. I am going to use wet glue, art glitter glue. I transfer my art glitter glue into these smaller bottles with these nice tips. It just works for me. And I will put what I will call a little more than what I would normally do because I want it to stay wet because I need to have those few extra seconds for placement pur purposes. So like I said, I'm going to line it up. I just want to make sure I'm on screen here. I want to line it up right at the top. And right down the edge as best I can and I want to have that little bit of play time to slide it around if I need to but that looks pretty ding dang good and now I'm gonna press it this pen is probably going to uh, um, smudge but that's okay like we said this was just for tutorial purposes so once I know I've got that pressed pretty well, I can actually do the bottom now. Because now that should line up pretty well. I mean, I could do both sides. I might just do the other side just to make sure that I get that centered one. And I always like to do a dry run before I, to make sure that it's square and that it's going to line up halfway decently. 
I always do what I call a dry run. I don't put any adhesive on it. I just make sure I see kind of what it looks like. It does look pretty centered. I mean, I know it's, it's listing over a little bit, but I can kind of tell that we're in good shape. I'm going to do the same deal with the glue. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go crazy heavy, but I, I am going to go a little heavier than what I normally do just to keep it wet. I don't want it to dry too fast. I just want to have a little bit of play time. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm lining up on that top edge first. Then I'm just kind of tucking this under and making sure it's lined up where I want it. Now I'm going to press. And I'll give it a few seconds. Hit it with the bone folder just to give it a good press. Yeah, I think I did pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but remember, these are handmade items. We want to get close to perfection, but we are not machines. We are people. And there we go. And like I said, I always do a dry run. That is going to look really nice. Like I said, I just like to do a dry test. And same deal. I'm just going to scratch on. I mean, it's really not a lot of glue because this is such a fine tip. I'm just going to tuck that down. And because this is fan folded, you can actually just kind of press. I mean, you can even take the whole thing to get your press. But by getting all that excess paper out of the way, we really did a good job. Now, I got ink kind of coming out on me here onto the paper, but that was a whole nother. I think we all understand what that is at this point. So yeah, see, it slid on me a skosh, but it's actually not bad. You're never going to see that. So that's main pocket. Second pocket. Now, because this is only a half inch, I can actually start with the bottom because I'm going to have these miter corners are actually gonna, going to line up. So we are good. But like I said, I like to do dry runs. Yay, I actually can measure. Apparently I know how to use a ruler now. I used to work in a sign shop, and I found out I did not know how to use a ruler. Like, I couldn't cut things straight. Like, she would look at me because, like, things had to be loaded in the machines, which were kind of like giant crickets, but they were huge. Like, they were, oh, my God, three, four feet wide, and you put the, um, the vinyl. Just like we do in the vinyl with the crickets, but this was a giant one. This thing was huge. It was really cool. Um... But I don't have 25 grand because that's about what I think that machine cost her. But that thing was cool as heck. But yeah, but I, and you had to cut it. You had to get a nice straight edge. And man, did I not, I failed at that because you needed it because you had these big wide rolls you need and it was coming off the roll and you needed it to feed straight. So if you didn't cut that thing straight and you didn't load it straight, you had problems. So it took me a little time to get good at that. But again, my dry run. Always do a dry run. Am I on camera? Here we go. And this I'm not going to get too wet with. I do want to get up to that edge, though. Because I shouldn't need too much time, because it is. But I like to just have it... And at this point, because I have that bottom on there, I can kind of just let it naturally go where it wants to sit. And just make sure it's lined up on this edge. That's all I'm doing. And like I said, remember, we're not machines, we're human beings. So, I mean, if you're a sixteenth of an inch off, come on. We're not, we're not building parts for the space shuttle where the tolerances are... Are crazy accurate but I do like to get it as close as possible because the closer you get it just the neater and nicer your finished product comes out it's just facts 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 but see how they press it down I'm just letting it kind of slide and now I'm just lining it up with my thumb getting it into a place where I like it and then I'm just gonna press could use score tape, but I like having that playtime for lining up purposes. So, uh, our glitter glue, even your Aileen's, I do recommend a wet glue. 
let that sit for a second and we're going to start the last one last one again this one can go i mean we're almost there guys we are almost done really it wasn't bad um i'm going to do the bottom oh did i do my dry run i did not so i'm just going to wipe that little glue off with my finger yep that looks good I'd rather do a dry run in case I did mess up on cutting. Um, I just like to make sure that I'm I'm good. Okay, so same deal. I'm gonna line up my bottom first. I like it. I can flip that down now and press. Press, press, press. Now I can, now for these, even this middle pocket, I probably could have done that way too. But these small pocket, it's not a lot to work with here. I could probably do these at the same time. I think that is how I did it on the last one, but yes, because I think I don't get a lot of maneuverability. But if you don't feel comfortable, just do them one at a time. But all I kind of did was... I just kind of held them down, tried to keep my fingers out the glue as best I could. Lined it up. Yep. Maybe I shouldn't have. No, I think I'm okay. I got that side pinched down. And now I can line up. Behave yourself. There we go. I mean, it's not, may not be perfect. My score line might not have been perfect, so... But it's still, but when that's all matted and it's stuffed and it's loaded, you're not going to see that. But that's it, guys. If I wanted to, if I wanted to be super extra, I could have taken my, uh, my different edged shears and things. I could have cut what we knew was, what I know was going to be the top. I could have cut fancy edges, things like that. But that is it, you guys. Super simple. Um, you got my measurements, definitely. That's why I tried to hold them up on the screen for a little bit so you can pause, write them down, draw your own little deal. But that's it, guys. That's how it works. It's super simple construction. You get nice pleated edges. Like I said, I got to give Tamika full credit for her design. I was just showing my... Um, my, uh, my measurements. That's really all I was showing and just quick construction, but it was, it was really all her, but that's it guys. That's basically all this was. Oh, I did cut a notch in it, which you can do. Um, I could have done it before. Just want to get close to center. What I did was, cause I did do it after the fact, you could cut these before I folded them out first, just so I got them positioned how I wanted them sorry let me get up here just so I can get them positioned where I want them that looks pretty good then I just can fold them back in use my bone folder press them uh, my glitter glue now because I don't have to worry about <clears throat> play time with that I can go a little, little lighter on the glue. I don't need to go quite as heavy. And this isn't full construction. This is just holding a little flap of piece of paper on the inside. And I would cut these flaps after you mat. I think that's the easiest way. You'll never, I don't know of a good way of matching up those angles. And I'm not busting out protractors and things. That's not happening. We're not going to be that extra. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. Load her up decorate her up, send her out, make somebody's day. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.